are frequently asked, which should I use, continuous lighting or speed lights? So here today, we're gonna to go through the key differences and what might be right for your application. Okay, so let's start off with some of the advantages of continuous lighting. Continuous lighting is continuous, so every single time you move the light source, you're going to see the results in real time. This makes it very easy for people that are learning lighting and people that are kind of in a bit of a hurry that want to just get quick results. You can also generally use a continuous light source at almost any shutter speed, with a few exceptions due to light flicker. Also, one of the big advantages over speed lights is that you can use them for video. If you're somebody that's a video shooter, then you are going to need some kind of continuous light source, whether that's a dedicated light panel or whether you can make use of natural light. Most of the larger LED light panels generally run on AC power, although you can get some that take a Sony V battery or various other batteries. Moving on to some of the disadvantages of continuous lighting, depending on which panels you buy, they're either going to be not anywhere near as powerful as a speed light, you're generally not gonna be able to therefore bounce them, you're gonna to have to use them directly on your subject and that means you're either gonna need light modifiers or you're gonna give your subject a fairly harsh look. Small LED light panels can be used for kind of run and gun shooting, particularly with video stuff, but remember if it's not that powerful, you're gonna to have to get quite close to your subject to be able to get an accurate exposure or you're gonna to have to start bumping that ISO and the point of bringing light into the scene is that so you can bring that much further down. In terms of light panels that we like to recommend, you may have seen Toby's recent review of the Per Gear Lightmate Plus. I'm recording with it now and I use this for all of my videos. It's really well made. If you wanna see a full review of that, please do go and watch Toby's video. There are cheaper options. However, most of these either make some sacrifices in terms of quality or different functionality. Okay, so in terms of advantages for speed lights, these are generally more portable, and I use the word generally because that's not always the case. These tend to run on batteries, and the flash output tends to be significantly higher than that of a light panel. Because of that power output, you're able to bounce the flash or use various different light modifiers and not lose too much light so you can bring your ISO all the way down to the base and get really nice clean images. This is taken with the light panel and although visually pleasing, the ISO had to be at 500 even with the panel on full power. Whereas with the speed light, I only had to have it on 1 16th and was able to bring the ISO all the way down to the base. Significantly more power output from the speed light. Moving on to the disadvantages. Now, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, you can't use these for video. If you're a video shooter, it's just something that's not an option. Flashes are also limited by what's called a sync speed. Now this will depend on your flash model, this will depend on your camera model. Now generally speaking, the flash sync speed is around about 1 200th of a second. If you try to use your flash at a shutter speed quicker than this, you're gonna end up with shots that have this across them where the light output can't reach the sensor quick enough and you're gonna end up with dark spots. An option around that is to buy a flash that has the high speed sync function. Look, what's gonna be right for you totally depends on your application. If you're just beginning to work with light, you may find continuous light sources better because as we mentioned earlier, you're gonna be able to see your exposure in real time. You're gonna be able to see how that light falls off of your subject. Perhaps if you're doing a portrait, you can pick exactly where that catch light is gonna be in the eye. Continuous light sources are great for, of course, video. They're great for portraits. They're great for product shots and you can use them for a variety of other functions. Speed lights are generally better, in my opinion, for outside work, anything where you need a little bit more power, instances where you need to bounce the flash, and you need something that is, generally speaking, more portable. In terms of flash recommendations, we really love the Yongno product line. This is a YN565EX Mark II, and as always, links to the gear that we talk about in these videos will be linked below. So which one is gonna be right for you? If you're somebody that's just starting out with light and just kind of wants to play around with maybe products or portraits, I would probably go with a continuous light source. That's not to say that you won't get the results you want with speed lights, you absolutely will, you absolutely can, and speed lights are fantastic. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content from both of us. Thanks for watching.
Goodbye.